Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nino. So this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve your game. This is particularly important now that we have a Factorio launch and uh, lots of new people are coming in. So I am taking this particular video to go through some of the keyboard shortcuts and some of the concepts that are that's kind of the things that we pick up over years of playing this game. But if you're new or maybe you just haven't explored so much, then maybe you don't know these tricks. And uh, therefore, I'm going to make this video what uh, a lot of these videos have become or a lot of these shortcuts have become so ingrained for me that I don't simply do not remember the shortcuts. Therefore, as you can see in the lower right hand corner of the screen, I have taken an overlay that takes some of the most important keys on the keyboard as well as the mouse buttons so that you can see what I'm clicking. So when I say shift, but you can actually see that it, it's control that I hold down, then you will know that um, trust the keyboard, tr don't trust me. Now these masterclass videos usually start as a workshop session streamed live on my Twitch channel. This is over at Twitch TV slash Nilos and usually it takes place on Monday at 8 p.m. Central European time. But since I'm streaming most evenings and especially around the launch, then uh, do drop on by and say hi and uh, just do check out. I really appreciate when people come on and join because we do discover new things that are just really unique every single time. Now this video will be structured in three different sections about shortcuts about blueprinting and about some other cool features that are not really shortcuts or blueprints, but um, really damn handy. So let's, uh, let's dive in. Now let's start with some shortcuts. Uh, the first one we want to do is press Alt. There we go. You press it once and then you try not to press it again unless you alt tab out of the game because what it does it changes the interface so that you can now see what every machine is making which is kind of obvious that you want to do that and also you can see what's in each box so extremely handy and i would highly recommend always having this one on and don't change anything here so the next one is my favorite shortcut and that's the q button what it does is you hover over an entity so you can see the one that's selected and press q then you suddenly have it in hand this is super efficient if I want to build something because most of the time when you want to build something, you actually want to build something you've already built nearby. So if you already have it, you can see how much easier I feel, at least the way I feel, it's just easier for me to go up here and grab it instead of figuring out what the shortcut is. So for example, shortcuts for for belts like this, but I could also just grab a belt over here and go like, okay, I'm gonna need one belt in and get that other one out and one in here. I'm gonna need some inserters. We're gonna grab some inserters here be like that and we also need some long hand inserter we got that here the grabbing tapping yeah damn you know what we need some lights as well so i would highly recommend if you're not familiar with the q button the pipette function get started on using it it's going to make your life so much easier it also minimizes your dependency on your shortcuts because over time you won't be able to have all the things you want on the shortcut menus so uh, but you will most likely have the stuff you want to build nearby anyway. If you're building an outpost, then all the stuff you have for the outpost, you already have them nearby. And if you want to extend the production line, you probably also have another production line next to it. Now let's talk about interaction with entities in, uh, in or items in chests. So we have a chest here. This is going to be our test chest. So basically, if you want to move things back and forth, you can grab a stack and you can put it in and you can put the stack back again. That's kind of the easiest way. You can also right click and then take half of a stack take it into your inventory and half a stack go back all that pretty good now but there is also other options and that is uh, we can we can pick up one stack by holding control uh, first of all we need to make sure that they are one stack there we go so if you pick up hold control you can see it on the screen control left click then i pick up everything of the same type also like this, left put in everything. If I want to pick up one stack, then I hold shift, pick up one step, one stack, and put it back again. If that's with the right left hand mouse, and if I do the right hand mouse with shift hold down, then I take half a stack and I can put half a stack back. You can also take half of a half stack. And once you get familiar with these things, it uh, it's it's difficult to say it, but you really get familiar with it and go, just go like, oh, okay, I think I need this on this one, but yeah, let's take half more. You can also, if you have a box with a lot of weird stuff in it, you can also 
control left click next to it and then you'll pick up everything that's in the in the location and now my robots go crazy because they want to feed me all the stuff that i was just throwing away so we got transfer one stack transfer half stack transfer all items transfer half of all items you can also control right click next to it then we take half of everything that's in there that's a really obscure function but it, it could be useful let's talk about handcrafting because if you if if i like anything then it's handcrafting that's for sure so let's just grab some stuff that we can use for handcrafting um let's get some stuff here there we go good handcrafting if i want to craft one item uh yeah i got lost to my own menu here if you want to craft one item you just click it you can see down here in the left hand corner it, it creates if you want to craft more items there if i hold shift it creates every item i can also click here shift click then it goes away i can do control i can't do control no no no. i can do shift shift left click then it's everything shift right click then it's Shift right, like right click doesn't do anything. Why did I write it down? It's left click to create one, right click to create five, shift left click to create all. And then we right click to get things out or sh shift left click. It's actually really strange. It's not very intuitive that it's uh, right click, right click to craft five, but shift left click to create all. It is what it is. You get used to it, it's, uh, it's just going to be muscle memory in no time. Now something else I've noticed that in my uh, playthroughs, that some people use like, oh, how did you do that? Then uh, that's uh, dropping items. So if you have an item in hand, you can press the set button or Z, depending on your nationality, and then you drop one on the ground. That's kind of annoying, but you can also drop it on moving belts. So if you have something in the inventory and you just want to feed it back into the belt, let's say you've got some blue circuits and you really want them back on the circulation, then you can just do this one. This is particularly uh, interesting when you're in the early part of the game. Let me see if I have anything that uh, can be used for this. Um, maybe I can just request it. I don't know if I have them. They should be coming. And the other part I can do is press F, hold down F key, and then run around, and then I'll pick up everything below me and sort of one tile around. I have just crafted some of these. Now, the usual part that I see a great usage for using the set button is in the beginning when you have some ore and you just put them in here. Hold down the Z key and then just move the mouse over. That means that it's a good way to fill up inventory or fill up uh, fill up furnaces in the early game yes that's how it is now another thing that i've seen way too many questions and i know myself that i have uh, had that issue before when you start making pavement because why wouldn't you make pavement then you start with this little tiny box here and you want to make it bigger now the default keys is pressing plus and minus to increase the size of this uh, pressing the plus key to increase and minus key to decrease. This is a good intersection for me to go in and look at controls, the keyboard settings. There is a stupendous amount of uh, interactions here. They're super exhaustive. And I I think it's really cool that everything is here. So for example, zoom in, zoom out. I got the mouse wheel, but let's see. I want to see if I can find this one because I've remapped this one to my scroll wheel because I found that to be way easier. Hmm. Yeah. As you can see, there's a lot of things and I, I don't even know all of them. Somewhere around here, there is an option for increasing the tile size. It's plus and minus as default when you hold this in hand, so you can increase it. But what I've done is I've remapped it so that I can do. Sh control and then scroll up and down on the mouse wheel you can also see that visualized i find that to be super easy when making for example path then make sure that it fits because then i don't have to change my mouse cursor from uh, my mouse hand from my mouse and then press the numpad because it's kind of far away with the numpad 
But that's all, of course, up to you. Now, the next section, we're going to talk about blueprinting. And um, this is where things are a bit weird. Because for some reason, you don't have blueprinting in your very first game. So you only get access to blueprinting when you have researched robots. Mm, which one is it? that one? Uh, or maybe this one? It's one of these. Either it's robotics or it is robots, then you will get access to blueprints. And once you have blueprints in one game, then you will have it unlocked in all games. But if for whatever reason you want this uh, in your first game, then there is a command. And it's it's kind of... It doesn't... Um, it's, it's a console command that you can execute called unlock shortcut bar. Boom. You can see down here we get this shortcut bar that gets unlocked and all of the things that you have available is, uh, is now here, including the blueprints. Uh, this little box here is where you can add which ones you want to display. I am not, I don't want a lot of these because I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use the import string. I'm going to use the blueprint book. And I don't want to toggle these ones here. Yeah, so I want it as small as possible. So only the things that I could use are down here. You can still see it be kind of, yes. So this is also a way that you can get a blueprint but when you have the blueprints available either because you have researched the first time then i'm not going to do an extensive thing on blueprinting because i think that's uh, warrants a bit more detail also how you manage blueprints and blueprint books across games it's a bit complicated so a bit much for sort of a tips and tricks video so what we're going to be covering is basically just the, the copy paste function because when you have it you can use this awesome functions these copy when you do Control C, then you get the copy function, and you can see my cursor changed. Or I can do Control X for cut. That means it already it also moves it. But I'm going to do a copy. So I'm taking a copy, just dragging the mouse over here. That means I created a copy in hand, and I can stamp down here, and then robots will build it if we have robots, of course. This is why it only enables when you have robots. So that's pretty damn awesome. But we can also do it with the Control X. So we remove things if I rather wanted it down here. So once you get used to those, it's super easy. Um, what you can also do is, uh, if you have a blueprint, or if you don't have anything and you press Control V as in paste, then you get the last blueprint you had, so you can print it again. That means, for example, if I decided to take all this blueprint and and I don't want to run around with this in my cursor, I can just press Q, so it cleans it out. But when I remove to the location I want, I can press Control V and then I can stamp it down if I feel so inclined. But if I wanted the other one, then I can, and let's see if I can remember, Shift, scroll wheel, then I can get to the other blueprints. And there's a queue of blueprints. And it's pretty long. I think it was like 20 blueprints or something. It stores, it remembers for you. So if you make a blueprint and then you want to get back to the one you made like a couple of, of uh, blueprints ago, then you can just scroll down and go, yes, I actually want that one here. But it gets better than that, because if you make a mistake and <laughs> it, that happens, then you can just press Control Z and it removes it. Control Z again, or Z. And then it, there's a really long list again of uh, undo commands and it's really handy. However, if you undo something, you can't redo it. And that sometimes become uh, problematic, I'd say. So I built this, then I go over here because there are some things that do not undo, uh, like wire conditions if I, for whatever reason, remove that and go like, oh, that was a mistake, undo. Now what happened? Well, this didn't change. But the stuff over here that I built previously now gets removed. So be aware that when you press undo, it un it, there are some things it can undo, like entities, but not states in entities, such as if you change the state uh, or the conditions in wire conditions, uh, circuit network conditions, or logistics network conditions. Those will not change. Or recipes, for example. If I change the recipe, you can't undo and get the other recipe back. There. So that is 
copy, cut, paste, and undo. Sort of normal office uh, functions. That's uh, pretty damn handy, and uh, I would highly recommend getting used to using those, because even if you don't have robots available, then it's just really nice when you build something and you, you can just lay out the foundation and say, all right, this is what I'm going to build. So using ghosts more efficiently, and then we can just go into ghosts because ghosts are kind of related to our, I will just add this one so I can talk on my own. Now my robots are not working. So if I take this, if I place it, then it gets built. But if I hold shift while placing it, you can see that the cursor changes to a little ghost. Then it doesn't get placed. It just gets a place, a ghost of it. And that means a robot will come in and place it. The reason why I disabled my own is because if I did it, then it would just go really quickly on putting it down there. And it's really handy sometimes to build with ghosts if you just want to get an idea about what's going on uh, or before you have robots just to lay out the foundation of, okay, this is where I want this build and it needs to be this big. I don't, can't build it yet, but I can at least sort of plan ahead for it. So that's how the ghosts work. Uh, ghosts are super easy to remove if I just remember to... You can just uh, right click them, then they disappear. And now let's just look at some extra cool stuff. This is, um, these are some of the, the things that definitely are not sort of uh, starter things, but uh, I, I think they're really cool. So the first thing is maybe you notice that my inventory looks different from yours. If you go into settings under interface and there's this one called flat character GUI. This is unchecked by default, which means it looks like this and you have to tap between these sections. I find that to be incredibly annoying because I want to see my logistics integration and I want to see my crafting at the same time. So having this option is actually super nice because now I can save my inventory, my crafting and my logistics. I never really look at the character. I don't care. It is what it is, right? There. So that gives you, that's a little nice little trick here. Another trick, you can see that I have three hotbars, maybe you only say you have two and you don't know what setting it is. And then you also go in interface and active quick bars. Let's make it four. And now I have four active quick bars. There is a function here that you can have multiple out here. I have so far not really found a use for it that just warrants us actually doing it. Yeah, what I've tried to use in this one is, is basically have, when I basically have the first one being built and then I could change it to be rails when I'm out there building rails, but it's it's kind of a hypothetical use scenario. The reason why I only have three instead of using four is because when I have console commands, they overlap with the fourth line. That's why I only use three. And I often have console commands. Um, let's see, I'm gonna remove this. Let's go back to this one, active quick pass, there. Now let's go into some really cool things that uh, I use in pretty much all my maps, but there should be a caveat to this. This is my Death Star base. This is my it's my train, where, train mega base and there are series here on YouTube. So if I go press F4, we go into debug action and read the stuff in red. These settings should be used only for debugging and bug reports. They can cause game issues and performance issues, blah, blah, blah. There is a really, really, really cool option that I wish was integrated, but I use it all the time. It is called Show Logistics Robots on Map. Wow, that did nothing, right? That did nothing, nope. But if I now say, hey, you know what, this area, I don't want it. I'm gonna delete it, delete this part. And then I zoom out and you can see here, the every one of these yellow thing here, they are robots. You can now see what's going on on the map because the robots are, now visualized. This is something that for all bases, almost all bases, this is not a problem. But if you are building a mega base and you are running out, uh, your base cannot keep up or your PC cannot keep up, then disable this function because obviously it's a debug function. It's drawing a lot more stuff on the map, especially if you have tens of thousands of robots active. But as you can see here, Without this function, I wouldn't know what's going on, but right now I have a really, really clear idea about where they're being picked up, where they're being delivered to, and on other maps where you have lots of advanced logistics uh, sequences, you can also see something is going on here. Don't even know what, but something is going on here. Uh, they're bringing some, 
some light back back to uh, to our storage back here just putting it back into storage so that's one option another option that's probably not going to be uh, super good on this map but it's actually really helpful if you're building trains is another option over here Let's see if i can find it um show rail signal states boom if you're debugging trains and you want to make sure that get an idea about what's going on it's so much easier to look at it from the map view and you can see if we follow this train along let's actually just follow it along like this you can see how the signals are changing around this particular train and hopefully maybe you can spot some errors in this especially in a base like this which has an obscene amount of signals then it's quite helpful if you want to visualize it however the same warning goes that if you're out here and you have this much you're going to start tanking your performance by visualizing a lot more than you strictly need so this warning do a, does apply you can use it for um, if you want to but uh, be careful and don't use it uh, do use it excessively and if you have fps uh, updates issues then probably a good idea to take those out but until then i think it's a great uh, way to verify what you, what's going on and just also see the train network being a bit more active by having the signals change colors and the last thing i want to uh, to show is that if you are if you've started the map and you're doing research and you don't have the research queue enabled which means that if you click another one then it actually chooses the other research instead but you want to have that then there's only really one way to do that and that's uh, through a console command or restarting the game uh, the default option when creating the game is that after the game is complete you get the research queue enabled but if you really want the research queue enabled and maybe you're watching one of my let's plays and seeing that i have it enabled and you're wondering why then it's because when you create the map the default setting under the advanced tab is that it's only available after the, after the game is complete but if you really want it there is a console command like this slash c game player force research queue enabled true however this will disable steam achievements so use it with care it's just if you got stuck and you really want it then you can use this command and it um, it does nothing except enable the research queue and that's basically some of the cool things that i wanted to illustrate in this uh, this playthrough or this uh, tutorial i think that uh, these are just some of the cool things that i hear a lot of comments on my youtube videos like how did you get multiple uh, multiple hot bars how do you show uh, robots on map uh, how did you copy paste uh, this much those are some of the things so that's why i've summarized in this video i hope it's useful and helpful to you as we're going into the new 1.0 release so uh, if you like these kind of videos be sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel for more content like this if you want to support the channel there's a patreon link but there's of course no obligation if you want to hang out uh, especially during the launch or any other time then i'm streaming lots and lots of factorio over on twitch the address is twitch tv slash nilos and i hope to see you there thank you very much for watching and until next time stay effective <laughs>